What's up y'all? Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can make these really cool particle trail effects in Blender using the new simulation nodes that are coming in Blender 3.5. And if you want to get the 3.5 alpha branch that already has the simulation nodes we're going to be using, then there's a link in the description where you can download that. So I've just got a new scene here. And the first thing I'm going to do is just for the tutorial, I'm going to delete the default cube. Shift A, add in a cylinder, rotate this 90 degrees on the X axis, tab into edit mode, and I'm gonna delete these two cap faces, select all and scale it on the Y axis a little bit. Now I'm gonna add a subdivision surface modifier, set this to two levels and apply it. Then I'm gonna make sure that I am saving my file because again, this is a very unstable branch of Blender. So with that, let's hop over into Geometry Nodes and add a new node tree to our mesh. Then just like in my last two videos, I'm gonna make a very simple particle emitter setup. So I'll add in a Distribute Points on Faces node and a Scene Time node. Plug the frame value into the seed. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add in my Simulation nodes. You do have to add in the Simulation Output node first if you just downloaded the branch. Not quite sure why, but it doesn't work if you add the input node first. Now I'm just going to slide these over. Shift A, add in a join geometry node, plug that in there, and disconnect this from the simulation input and just plug it in there. Now you can come down here and right click, do a horizontal split, set this window to a timeline, and you'll see now if we hit play, We've got ourselves a particle spawner, just like in our last two tutorials. Now to add in just a little bit of basic animation, I'm going to add in a set position node right here and a store named attribute, set this to vector, and I'm going to name it to vel for velocity. Now if you grab an attribute node, switch this to vector as well, name it to the same thing, and I'm going to plug in a vector math node. I'm going to plug this normal value into the top and the attribute value into the bottom. Then I'll just plug the output from here into both the store named attribute and into my set position offset. Now, if I reset it, you'll see we've sort of got like the particles firing out. I am going to add in a scale node, I think, and lower this so that it's not quite so fast. Maybe make this like a 0.1. And I like that. And I'm actually going to disconnect this from the offset here and just plug my attribute directly in. This way they're spawning directly on the surface on the first frame when they're spawned and not getting offset immediately. Add in a junction there just to keep our nodes a little bit cleaner. And I'm gonna add in a bit of noise as well. So I'll just grab a noise texture and a vector math node, plug in the color, subtract 0.5, and then just add this to the attribute. Plug in a scale node here as well, and just lower your scale to something like 0.1, because I only want a little bit of noise. Maybe even lower, something like a 0 0.02. There we go, that looks pretty good. Now you can set this to 4D, Shift A, grab a Scene Time node, and plug the seconds into the W. And I'll grab a Math node, maybe divide this by 2, just so it's a slightly smoother animation. And yeah, that looks pretty good to me. You can also use the node setups that we built in my last two tutorials for this as well. It's 100% compatible. I'm just using this simple setup for the tutorial. And now that we have some animation, I'm actually going to remove this set position node and add in an extrude mesh node where I had it before and set that to vertices. Then I'm gonna add in a points to vertices node right before my join geometry. Now, if I reset this, and I'm very careful, you can see that I'm basically extruding every single point, every frame, 
and that is not what I want. So I'm going to duplicate this store named attribute node, set this from vector to boolean, rename it to top, and just plug this top value into here. Then if I grab an attribute node, set this to boolean as well, name it to the same thing, and plug this attribute value into the selection, you'll see nothing actually happens. And that's because these points basically can't get started because there is no top value when they're initially just spawned in. So if I slide this over, I can add in a Boolean math node, set this to or, then I'm gonna grab myself an edges a vertex node. And so if you think about it, on the first frame when they're just spawned in, none of these vertices are going to have any edges attached to them. So this edge total value is going to be zero. So I can grab a compare node, set it to integer, and set this to equal. Now if I plug this total into the top, and plug this result value into the boolean value, I can reset this, and you'll see now our animation actually gets itself started. And now if we come back down here and plug from this little junction, the value we were plugging into the offset on our set position, we can just plug that into the offset on our extrude mesh. And now you'll see we have our nice, really fluid actually, like surprisingly fluid animation. And so the next thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that these points sort of stop extruding at a certain point. So that way, you know, your trail is only like say eight vertices long. And in order to do that, I'm just gonna grab a set ID node. I'll slide these over a little bit. And I'm gonna plug the top value from here into the selection. So that way we're only affecting the points that are created newly on each frame. And I'm just gonna set the ID to the frame. Now, if we add in a delete geometry node, then we can come up here and add in a scene time node, an ID node, and a compare node. And I'll set my compare node to integer, plug the ID into the top, switch this to less than or equal, plug the frame value into the bottom, then plug in a math node, set it to subtract. And so now we can see if the ID is less than or equal to the current frame minus some value. And so whatever value you put in the bottom here is basically gonna be how many vertices long each of your lines is. So if I set this to 11 and plug the result into the selection here, restart my animation. Now you'll see each of my splines actually stops extruding after some point. So now that we have our trails, the next thing I'm going to do is basically just make these look pretty. So I'll add in a mesh to curve node. And you won't really notice it with this animation. But if you add in a set spline type and set this to Bezier, then add in a set handle type. Then if you actually have like any really hard twists and turns, this will really smooth out your curves. Though this does come at the expense of geometry. So I'm gonna add in a resample curve and just plug the count value into here. And this will give us like the resolution value for each of our splines. And I'm also gonna come back here and just add in a group input and plug this value into the subtract node we added in earlier. So that way I can control the length of my trails basically from over my interface. Now, if we add in a set curve radius node and then grab a spline parameter node and a float curve, You'll see this a lot in my other videos. We'll just plug the factor here into the value slot and grab a math node, set this to divide by like 10 or so and plug this into the radius. Now, if we add in a curve to mesh, 
and a curved circle. Plug this into the profile curve. Let this run for a second. Now we can just sort of adjust the profile of each of our splines. I'll set this to auto clamped here. And I'm gonna give them a trail that looks something like that. Maybe up my count value just a touch. And I quite like something like that. One other thing actually I forgot to mention is that if you come back here to before the joint geometry, slide over your edges of vertex node and the compare node, and just add in a delete geometry right here before the joint geometry, that's really important, and plug this result value into the selection. This will sort of fix some weird spawning issues I noticed where Blender would seemingly just extrude too much. Not sure if that's just a glitch or if I'm overlooking something. Now, coming back over here, before your curve to mesh, add in two store named attribute nodes. You're gonna wanna keep this first one as a point, but then set this other one to a spline. Now for this first one, I'm gonna name it SF for a spline factor. Grab a spline parameter node, just plug the factor into there. And for this one, I'm gonna name this to SRV for spline random value. So that way if we want to, we can give each spline a random color. Just grab a random value node there and plug that into the value slot and you're all good. Now you can also grab another group input and actually I'm gonna lower this resolution here on my curved circle to three. You can up it if you want, but really you don't notice any difference that much especially if your camera isn't moving. And I'm gonna plug the radius value into my group input, so that way I can just control this from over in the interface. Now for my absolute last node, I'm gonna add in a set material node. And again, a group input, plug this into here and select material. Now I can jump over into my shading editor and I'm actually gonna work in Eevee for this. I will check on Bloom though, just to make this look a little bit better. Jump over into your shader view, and I'm gonna turn the world light off. And I'm actually gonna delete this light they have there and jump over into the material I assigned. And just add in a basic emission shader. Now, if I grab my two attributes, grab the spline factor, plug this into the strength. Then grab a color ramp. You can see now I can just basically control the fall off of the emission strength. Can also grab a math node set to multiply if you like. Might make these emit a little bit brighter. And you can again add in a float curve just like we did with the profile. And I'll make this look a little bit more like exponential. Then you can either just select a random color or you can grab another attribute node. Set this to SRV, the spline random value that we stored. Bring in a color ramp and I'm just gonna set my positions to thirds, basically. And set this to constant. Now I'll just select some basic sort of primary-ish colors. And you can plug the factor value into here, plug the color into your color slot. And now each of your points has a randomly chosen color from your color ramp. And I actually do like to lower the saturation a bit. I feel like that just gives it a slightly cooler vibe, but of course you can do whatever you want with this. And yeah, that is pretty much the entire effect. Again, this works with both the animations we created in my last two tutorials, so feel free to check those out as well. You just have to plug all the vector math that we build into the offset value on your extrude mesh instead of the offset value on a set position node. So yeah, that's the tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching. 
If you liked it, consider liking, subscribing, all that YouTube jazz, and hope to see you in the next video.